Thank you for viewing our video on how to add and edit auctions using the GabbleBuddy auction program. In this video, we will be covering the basics of managing auctions in the GabbleBuddy program as well as utilizing auction templates to make the auction entry process even more efficient. The first thing you need to do is log into GabbleBuddy using your username and password. Once you have successfully logged in, you will click the setup menu at the top of the screen then add edit auctions. You will now see two tabs towards the top of the screen. The first tab allows you to add new auctions. The second tab is for editing existing auctions previously entered into the system. We will start with the Add Auction tab. Adding an auction in GabbleBuddy is very simple and will work for both pre-cataloged and on-the-fly auctions. To begin adding a new auction to GabbleBuddy, you will first select the date of the auction. You do this by clicking on the Auction Date input box. This will generate a calendar for you to select the correct date of your upcoming auction. Next, you can select a category for your auction. The auction category is not a required field, but it is very useful for generating mailing lists for bidders who may have specific auction interests. For example, if you wanted to send out an email or flyer to all people interested in antiques, this field would be used to identify your new auction as an antique auction. Any bidder winning an item in this auction would be included in a mailing list targeting antiques. If you are not interested in sending out emails or flyers to bidders based on auction categories, then you can disregard this field. The next field on the screen is the auction template field. We will cover auction templates in a few minutes. For now, I'm going to ignore this field and come back to it later in the video. Buyer check-in required is the next option on our screen. This option is available to auction companies that want to require all of their buyers to manually check in with the cashier prior to bidding on merchandise. By selecting Yes from the drop down menu, all non permanent buyers will be required to check in prior to being able to place a bid. If your auction company uses permanent numbers exclusively and does not require your buyers to manually check in before every auction, you will set this option to No. The seller check-in required field functions the same way as the buyer check-in required option. If you want your sellers to be checked in prior to every auction, select yes. If you use permanent seller numbers and do not require the sellers to check in prior to every auction, make sure no is selected from the drop-down. The next field on the screen is the auction title field. This field allows you to associate a name with your auctions. This can help you more easily identify the active auctions when navigating throughout the software. It is not required. An example of when I might use this field would be if I had two auctions per week. One, an antique auction, and the other, a general consignment auction. I could use this title field to specify weekly antique auction or general consignment auction. For this example, I will call this auction weekly antique auction. This brings us to the final step of the auction information portion of the auction setup, seller fee types. Seller fee types allow you to enter in custom fee types for your sellers. For example, if you have an advertising fee or storage fee, you can define them here. These fee types will show up on your seller's invoices at the end of an auction. When you pay your sellers, you will be able to enter in dollar values for each fee type. These fee types are not required. If you don't use any special fee types for your sellers, then do not worry about populating these fields. You may leave them blank. Now that we have the first portion of the adding an auction process completed, we can now go to the buyer's premiums and sales tax. If you do not charge a buyer's premium, you do not need to populate these fields. If you do charge a buyer's premium, you can specify different buyer's premiums for different payment types. For example, if you charge a 10% buyer's premium for cash and check, you may also charge a buyer's premium for credit card payments of 12.5% to help offset some of your credit card processing fees. GavelBuddy will automatically calculate the buyer's premiums for all three payment types, even when multiple payment types are used by a paying bidder. If a buyer uses both cash and a credit card, GavelBuddy will figure the exact buyer's premium due for both payment types. 
Buyer's premiums can be set up as a straight percentage or can be set up on a sliding scale. For example, if you want your buyers to pay a 10% buyer's premium for cash or purchases under $500 and a 5% premium for purchases totaling more than $500, you can set that up here. And it would basically look like this. Now, if you were doing the straight buyer's premium that uh, for, like, let's say all of your purchases are at 10%, no matter what the dollar value is, then you would set it up to look like this. Buyer's premium taxable field allows you to charge a tax on the buyer's premium or exclude the buyer's premium from being taxable. If you change this field to yes, the buyer's premium will be included in your buyer's sales tax. If you selected no, the buyer's premium will not be taxed at all. In this case, our buyer's premium is 7%, so I will go ahead and add that here. One other thing I wanted to show you too, back to our example with cash, check, and credit. If both cash and check are 10% and your credit card is 12 and a half, it would look like that. Okay. The last step in adding an auction is specifying the terms and conditions. The terms and conditions will print at the bottom of your winning bidder's receipts. So once I add this information here in the terms and conditions portion, that actually will show up on the bottom of all the receipts of the folks that are paying for their items. Okay, now once you've entered in all the information for your auction, you simply click the Add Auction button and it will be entered into the system. One other feature I'd like to go over that is useful for smaller screens or mobile devices is the ability to minimize or maximize each menu section. So by clicking on these arrows, I can close or open any of these sections. Okay. Notice I don't lose any of the information I entered when I minimized each section. It simply allows me to better utilize my screen area when adding an auction. Now that we have successfully added an auction, let me briefly go over the process for editing an existing auction. By clicking on the Edit Existing Auctions tab, I see a list of all my active auctions that I've entered into GavelBuddy. From this screen, I can select an auction and either make changes to it or delete it. So by selecting the auction I just added, it pops up a screen that allows me to make changes to it. So let's say I want to get rid of my storage fee and I want to change my buyer's premium to 8%. I simply make the changes in here, click on update, and my auction has been successfully updated. As you can see, the adding and editing of auctions in GabbleBuddy is very simple and fast. Now that you know how to enter and ed edit auctions, we will go over one more feature that makes the process even easier to manage, auction templates. Auction templates can be created to save you even more time when adding an auction. You can predefine all your information in your template prior to in entering in your auction. This feature is useful because it allows you to only enter in the auction information once and then reuse the template for future auctions. This prevents you from having to type out the auction information over and over again every single time you add a new auction. To create a template, I click on my setup menu, then add edit auction templates. As you can see, the tabs are similar to the Add Edit Auction page. I can add new templates or I can edit existing ones. So as I look through this, you can see that all the information is the same. And you literally create this template the same way that you would add an auction. And then as you add, create the templates, they show up over here in the Edit Auction Templates screen. And you can also click on them to modify them. You know, 
the same thing that you did when you were on the auction, the main add edit auction page. Okay, so once I've created my template, if I go over to setup and go back to add edit auctions, instead of having to type all this stuff out, I can literally just select an auction template and it'll populate all of my information for me. I don't even have to type it out anymore. So those are the basics when it comes to adding, um, editing auctions, using the templates. Um, again, we thank you for viewing our video. You can contact us directly by going to gavelbuddy.com. Uh, we have a contact us page that allows you to call or email us regarding questions, concerns, enhancements, etc. We look forward to talking with you. Thanks.